Hi, I'm James Suckling, European editor of Cigar Aficionado, and I'm here with my colleague Dave Savona. Hi, James. We're going to be smoking the number three cigar of the year, Monte Cristo number two. It's a great cigar, and I mean, it's been one of our longtime favorites. When you think about a cigar shaped like this, a pyramid shape, you think of the Monte too, right? And in fact, uh, it's super popular. It's one of the most uh, popular cigars amongst uh, aficionados in the world now. For good reason. They're delicious smokes. They're consistently good. And they're, they're gorgeous on top of everything else. When you really have a lot of time, this is the kind of cigar you want to sit back and celebrate with, maybe. Well, let's talk less, smoke more. It takes a little while to light this up because it's a pretty big smoke, as you can see. Now, James, they make a lot of these in Cuba every year, don't they? It's, it's not a rare cigar. Well, actually, the production's gone up quite a bit recently. Uh, probably five, six years ago, they were making about uh, 1.25 million cigars, mm -hmm. mostly in the H. Upman factory. Mm -hmm. Now, production's gone up to about 3 million. Mm -hmm. Last time I checked uh, with the factory manager in Havana. And I think they're making them in, in a number of factories now, including La Corona, yeah. Upman, and Partagas. But still, most of them in H. Upman, or is it mm -hmm. just spread out? That's the factory. That's, that's called the... Fabrica Madre, meaning the, the mother factory, where they uh, maintain the, the blends, they control production in other factories. So that's really important that they do that to maintain quality. Mm. Get a real nice burst of solid flavor right, right from the first puff here. Monte Cristo classically has that cedary character along with tobacco. Mm. How do you find the draw? The draw of mine is perfect. How's yours? Well, that's the other thing, too, about this shape. The torpedo in Cuba, they call it piramide, pyramid. And with that slightly tapered end, you get a much cooler smoke. Mm. You find that now, no? Yeah. It, and the, uh, the nice thing about the taper is it really directs and channels the, uh, the smoke into one spot in your mouth. It kind of concentrates it a little bit. And we've always liked this cigar. This cigar always does well in our, in our blind tastings. That's because it's just a complex smoke. Lots of flavor. James mentioned uh, cedar and tea. We're just getting started with this one, but as it warms up, it's getting a little bit fuller bodied, um, maybe getting a little bit touch of leather in there, yes. uh, maybe some coffee bean. Really good stuff. Also, this is Mar one of Marvin Schenken's uh, favorite cigars. It has been forever. Marvin knows his cigars. He can't be wrong about that. And these age particularly well, right? Absolutely. I've had uh, Monte uh, number twos from the 40s, 50s. I think with about 10 years of box age, they really come into their own. Tough to be patient, though, and to lay this down for 10 years. So, Dave, the only way this could be better is with a nice shot of 7-year-old Havana Club, no? Sounds good. In Havana, even better. Let's go.